Didn't see you coming. Welcome to my humble abode. You know okay, I see, I see. Ting, ting. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it is the winds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. back with another video. What are we talking Pour about? Pour some today, wine. That's Join right. us. Join or us. juice if that's your conviction. Right. I don't know. Ching, ching, ching again. Ching, 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 ching again. <laughs> ching, ching. What are we talking so, about, baby? We are talking about what did our single season look like? Okay. And like, how did that go? How did that prepare us for marriage and where we are today? Okay. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. You wanna go first? So yeah, I'll start. <laughs> All right, so single season for me. What that look like? What, what the air quotes for now? What's that? What's that going on now? <laughs> the air quotes. What is that? Single. Uh-huh. I was single, definitely. So single season, what that look like for me? <laughs> With my palette a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the single season for me. What this looked like was actually financial preparation more than not. Oh. You know, actually, it was a couple of couple of things. Mm -hmm. I had a therapist. Oh, look at yeah. you, black man going to therapy. Mm, that's right. That's right. Look, don't don't Go hurt ahead. yourself now. Right. Don't hurt yourself, baby, with the guns. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I had the therapy. Uh, I started therapy. May 2020 or April April 2020 is when I started therapy. Why do you go to therapy? I initially started therapy because I was frustrated with a young lady I was dealing with at the time and it wasn't me. <laughs> she said she called me on the counter. It wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> so you're okay. dealing with a young lady. I was dealing with a young lady, uh-huh. And it was just so frustrating uh, because I had no idea how to communicate and mm. I had no idea how to even feel my own self and my own emotions. Mm -hmm. So I hopped into therapy because I felt Why like... Why do you think that, was, that is? What did you discover that in therapy? What happened? Uh, well, growing up, mm -hmm. I rejected my emotions. Because mm. that's be a man? I have no idea why. Okay, all right. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I rejected my emotions. Mm -hmm. And I didn't care for much as a mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. And this impacted relationships that I had with women. What do you mean by you didn't care for much? Like, I mean... An example. So uh, an easy example of this is I didn't care how, pe how people saw me, how people thought about me, or how people cared about me. I didn't care. Okay. If you thought that I was a certain way, like in high school when I had a lot of female best friends, let's say the peak mm -hmm. of the number of women that I was friends with was in high school. Mm -hmm. And there was this one girl in particular, she would always say, Charles, you're such a robot. Oh, so you're like monotonous and kind of stoic? Yes, like oh, very nonchalant, <laughs> yep, very stoic, absolutely, very mm -hmm. monotone, yes, 100%, like mm -hmm. I didn't bland. care. Bland. Mm -hmm. I didn't, emotionally bland. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. uh, and this translated into not only relationships, like platonic relationships, but it translated to romantic relationships as well, mm -hmm. and uh, or, or intimate relationships also. And in this while I was dating this girl, it was just, it had built up to a high where I was just so frustrated. I had no idea what to do. I had no idea where to turn to. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me get into therapy. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, so what did that um, help you at the end of the day? Like how did going to therapy, dealing with your emotions, how did that impact your relationships moving forward? Yep. So, well, the first thing that therapy did was to help me understand how women process mm -hmm. emotions mm -hmm. and how women process understanding, like how women understand and how they process life, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. 
and which allowed me to navigate who I was dealing with at the time. Okay. And ultimately, the greatest benefit that I received from therapy is therapy um, helped me to understand that care is a verb. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you have to show care, mm -hmm. right? Uh, otherwise, you will feel it, but the other person might not. Mm. And that will create a disconnect mm -hmm. in the relationship. It's like telling someone you love them, but then showing someone that you love them. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I never understood how to show care. Mm -hmm. Right. Actively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just always, I'm a man. I'm giving you my time, which is sure. That's how I show care. But there are other ways that you can show care as well. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you my time. What well, little money I had at the time, I'm also giving you this little money. Mm -hmm. This means that I care. Mm -hmm. However, she didn't receive it like that. Mm -hmm. So I learned through therapy that care is an action. Mm -hmm. It's a verb. It's an action word. Yeah. Right. And you have to actually show it. Mm -hmm. So this was a primary benefit that I received out of therapy, helping me understand how women process and understand and that care is an action word. So it's what did you start doing differently in that relationship and then moving forward? Well, that relationship ended. Well, I mean, just your relationships in general. Like, what did you do differently that you weren't doing before? Yeah. So I began showing how I care for you. So and how that shows up is hearing you active listening. Okay. You say, hey, you know, I like flowers. Mm -hmm. So now I buy flowers. Okay. Hey, I like forehead kisses, so I That's kiss what I said. forehead. That's what I told him. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> I told him literally like the first couple of weeks we were dating. Um, that's what I liked. Mm -hmm. I liked, you know, the PDAs and the forehead kisses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's right, baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. And. You can keep going. Okay. And. The, hey, I like this, or hey, I like that, right? And, and paying attention and picking up on that. Mm -hmm. um, that, and actually like following through on those things that you like, mm -hmm. presenting them to you. Right? You did real well our first Showing week. You that. I said that I like Moscato, mm -hmm. and you know, you got mm -hmm. me your favorite Moscato. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you heard that I like flowers, so mm -hmm. you got me flowers. Mm -hmm. I appreciated that. Yeah, hundred percent, baby. Hundred percent, of course. <laughs> you got brownie points with me, definitely, because you, know, you listened you know. if you paid attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to show that I care. Okay. And that was a primary benefit from mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to therapy. How I prepared for marriage in my single season was finances. Mm -hmm. I actually, before finances, I do want to talk about emotions. So I prepared care, which is a form of emotion, but my internal locus of control, let's say, how I handle emotions and how I receive emotions from, you know, who I'm dating. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, you know, we have had, you know, intimate conversations and conversations where you're expressing how you feel to me. And in the past, let's say five years ago, I would have said, oh, no, but this. Oh, no, but that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, but but this. So you would invalidate, unknowingly invalidate someone's feelings. Yeah. Uh, so that would be the impact. Mm -hmm. However, I would attempt to unknowingly control how you feel because mm -hmm. I would oh, sense. Oh, you're trying to be a man because this is how men think. Men like to fix the problem. Yeah. And women just want to be heard. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's something that a lot of people don't understand about masculinity and femininity. It's like when a woman is voicing how she feels, she's not looking for a solution. Mm -hmm. You've done this even in our marriage mm -hmm. once. And I'm like, babe, yeah. babe, 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 babe. <laughs> like, like yeah, let me I tell y'all. Like, I have, I have, I have, I have. like I, had, I had a whole meltdown. This is like a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um, with a hairstylist, right? And it was so traumatizing 
and I'm telling Charles about like what I just experienced. Like I cried in the car, right? And he's just like trying to find a solution. He's like, okay, but why didn't you do this? Okay, but you should have done this. Okay, but she didn't do this. Okay, but you didn't do your research. And I'm like, <laughs> I just said, okay, okay, never mind. <laughs> I said, never mind. And he's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm just like, you're not listening to me. <laughs> it's like, I'm not looking for a solution. This is the wrong timing. I said, I'm looking for empathy and consolation, you know, or is it console, right? That's, not, that's the word, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, I'm looking, like I'm, I'm looking for a friend and not someone to just fix my problems. Mm -hmm. And by you trying to fix my problems, you're invalidating the very real emotions I'm going through mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm glad though, mm -hmm. even if you didn't know, or you didn't go through all that therapy, like I had, it's kind of going to like what I had to learn in mm -hmm. my single season. I had to learn emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and I had to learn to process my emotions, not project and to be able to regulate and to communicate effectively. So I didn't pop off on him like, let me alone. Bah! I was just kind of like, babe, 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 okay, this is what I need. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was able to process quickly. Hey, I'm going through something traumatic. I am not in the place to hear a lecture right now. This is what I need. This is the best way that you can support me right now. I don't need an answer. I just need comfort. And he's like, oh, okay. It sucks that she did that. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, I still had enough like emotional intelligence to kind of like, you know, know like this is not a, you like you're just a man. Mm -hmm. This is just how men think. Mm -hmm. Right. But also as a woman, this is how I operate and this is what I need. Mm -hmm. I don't need no answers. I need a hug. Yeah. I, I need a I need someone to just be like, wow, I'm so sorry that you went through that. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hear you. Mm -hmm. You're right. She did she did mess up your your scalp. That's right, that's right. Cause she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can come talk to me about all the could have, should have, would have, maybe a couple of days from now when like the emotion subsided and I stopped venting about it, but not in the moment that I'm venting about something, you're like, well, you should have done this. How come you didn't do your research? But did you, and I'm like, <laughs> in the middle of my tears. <laughs> yeah. Telling me what I could have, should have, would have done. <laughs> so anyways, that, that's, that's an example of how, what you've learned. Right? Yeah, it you're is. still learning. I am. I am still learning. Now she said, Hey, I don't need a solution. I need emotional support. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I listened to her talk about it. That's all I, that's all I needed. Mm -hmm. And a hug. Mm -hmm. And a kiss on the forehead. Mm -hmm. And that everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. That's all I needed. The yep. End. <laughs> yep. Yep. Men, listen. <laughs> I'm here with you. <laughs> we here. I'm here with you, man. It, it, you know, it don't make no sense to us, but we here, right? You just have to understand. It does make sense. No. It does. No, it's like. Because emotions are not rational. They're not always logic. It's not always a solution. Like, well, it's just like. Okay, it's not. The attempt is not to invalidate your feelings. The attempt is prevent this from happening again. Which you can still do that. Not in the moment that it's happening that we need emotional support. Well, I hear you, baby. That's that's the point. No, okay. I would have been open to hearing you, and it's like it's not like what you were saying was wrong, but it's like this is traumatizing. Like, hold on, chill. Like, like that's that, like I need a hug. Right, which I hear you, right, and I receive that from you, and I supply that to you. Eventually. <clears throat> Eventually, okay. And here is also what I'm saying. As men, we say, this happened, this is an issue, this is how we fix it so that it won't happen again, and we move forward. That's how we handle situations. Whatever. So, when I say, you know, I'm here with the men, but men, we have to be here with our women. So, I hear you. As a man, it don't make no sense. It's like, okay, this happened. We have to put it behind us. How do we prevent this from ever happening again? Let's move on. And that's how we handle it. So, but, you know, I hear you. Okay. Anyways, what else did you learn in your single season so I can, me so I can chop. Okay. <laughs> I can chop with our subscribers. Right. Okay, so. By the way, subscribe if you like this type of content. Mm, let's get it. Jingle. <laughs>
Ching. <laughs> we got like three more chings in this, but go ahead. <laughs> right. Okay, so emotional. Emotions. So exactly what we're talking about right now. Emotions. Having understanding for emotions and not having to control how the woman I'm dating feels. Because as a man, I don't want you to feel bad. It makes me feel bad that you're feeling bad. And I'm like, no, we can't mm -hmm. have this. So let's fix this. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but I had to figure out mm -hmm. I cannot control how you feel. Mm -hmm. I just have to create space to have you feel how you feel. Look at you, look at you, mm -hmm. maturing. That's right. That's a little, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I had to create space for you to feel how you feel. Uh -huh. And... You have to manage your own emotions. Which I was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have to manage my own emotions. Mm -hmm. And I can't interfere or manage, with you, manage yours and vice versa. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was the second thing that I had to learn mm -hmm. uh, in my single season. Mm -hmm. uh, and then lastly, uh, finance. Finances. Yeah, I had to prepare financially for marriage. Mm -hmm. I have been broke, I have been homeless, I have had... Broke in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> I... That richly uh, Lord. Right, right, right. <laughs> Rich in the Spirit, right. <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit has provided me with wealth <laughs> and uh, prosperity. <laughs> uh, so I have been broke, I have been homeless, I have had a period in my life where I had $25 a week to spend on food. Sheesh. And... I had to, you know, prepare financially because the last thing that I was going to have for myself is brokenness mm -hmm. in marriage. Yikes. So I set out to work. I filed for bankruptcy in February of 2019, and that gave me a clean slate financially. Mm -hmm. And from then moving forward, I said, I will work my behind off until I achieve what makes me feel comfortable entering into a relationship and entering into a marriage. Mm -hmm. And at the time for me, that was $85,000 in cash mm -hmm. um, that I had. So look at the camera and say it's... <laughs> <laughs> I achieved that over two and a half years of working from between 2020 and July. 2022 when I met her I managed to save up $85,000 in cash which gave me comfort to step out into the world uh, and be okay in this dating market seeking a wife and then three days later you met me and three <laughs> days later the number of completion I met her the number of completion yep. the number of completion right and three days after he hit his financial goal of 85k that he met me I met her and that God is said, how son uh -huh. is your wife <laughs> literally literally Shoop. boom right there here here for me and that is how i prepared and spent my single season uh, that was juicy for marriage 100 percent, baby i love it how about you and um, what's that do being single are you done with your wine no it's chilling there okay. just you know if i'm sipping too too much you know uh subscribe they say ah you see she's a drunkard i drink the stupa mm -hmm. she's drinking it like juice <laughs> so <laughs> i had to just put it down for a second so I see. okay so how did i prepare in my singleness mm -hmm. um and what prepared me for marriage well there's a lot of stuff that I did in my singleness that didn't necessarily prepare me for marriage. So let me focus on what prepared, what actually prepared me for marriage. Because I can sit here and talk about, oh, I moved and I did this and I started ministries and I wrote a book. All that stuff really is more of a culmination of I discovered my purpose in my singleness. Mm -hmm. And I do think that's super important mm -hmm. to know what you're called to do in life and have a direction for your life before you get married. Mm -hmm. Because... If you find that out in marriage and then you realize that you and your husband are not equal yokes, mm -hmm. then what? He wants to do this one, he wants to do this one. Mm -hmm. And that creates problems. Yes, so mm -hmm. I think it's really important for anyone um, to have a sense of what they're called to do and their purpose in their mm -hmm. singleness. Mm -hmm. You know, single on purpose roll credits. 
<laughs> not to say that you have to have everything figured out but you should kind of know the direction you're going in and in my singleness i discovered one i'm entrepreneurial right i know i'm going to be a businesswoman one day um i know i'm going to be a ministry right i'd start two ministries i know i am going to be serving the pe serving the people of the lord not just business and you know for the marketplace for everyone but also i was going to be serving believers mm -hmm. um i knew that maybe not necessarily in a physical church in a physical location but i did know i was called to ministry and i also knew i was called to family right so i also knew i wanted to have a family not everybody wants a family not everybody wants to be married not everyone wants to have kids but i knew that that was a strong desire um i had prepared even for parenthood before I even had a man. I was single for six years, okay? I did not have no man. But I was sitting here, I had a whole Pinterest board for parenting. I would go to Barnes and Nobles. I would read books about parenting. I learned about gentle parenting and conscious parenting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I learned about those things. What else did I do in my singleness? Okay, so that was like my purpose. Um, another big thing that prepared me for marriage in my singleness was developing godly femininity. So if you all don't know, I'm a femininity coach, um, godly femme, shameless plug, okay? <laughs> and um, I coach spirit-filled curse breakers, well, spirit-filled women to level up through the art of godly femininity. So um, I went through a whole season that I strictly just developed my femininity. The Lord helped me to develop things like my beauty right mm -hmm. and i know that one seems vain and people mm -hmm. don't want to talk about that but, but Lord, you are beautiful okay so you see why i'm here okay <laughs> <laughs> well my beauty is what attracted you well 100%. but my character is what kept mm, of course baby exactly mm -hmm. so um that and when i say beauty it's not it's like just everything about me, like the Lord helped me to enhance uh, my character. A huge thing in godly femininity that was important for me to develop was emotional intelligence. I was not very emotionally intelligent before 2019. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I think it was like after, after 2019, like the beginning of 2020, that's when I started therapy. Um, and I was like, oh, whoa, I got issues. <laughs> and I gotta actually work it out. For a long time, I think I was, well, no, I just didn't know. I, I think I just didn't know. I was just doing stuff for the kingdom. I had friends, but I think there was nothing to really challenge me um, to show me, hey, you got some issues, right? So I started going to therapy um i started to really unearth a lot of like childhood trauma um parental wounds um uh, wounds even from like my previous relationship i never actually processed that and i had to just do the work a lot of women they go into dating and you know they're trying to level up even in their femininity but they're trying to just do the superficial stuff without actually doing the real work i'm talking about like therapy is real work and to listen to your therapist or to even seek out information about hey i struggle with perfectionism i struggle with rejection i have parental wounds i have these issues that the lord has made it painfully aware to me i have to do the work i have to get the resources i have to get the tools whatever so i had to journal i as i went to therapy i would sit with the lord i would cry right like all that emotion that i have kept in for so many years for so many different things i had to let it out in some types in some type of way i had to read books right to understand you know the different things i had went through and how it affected me and being aware of my own behavioral patterns right if I had certain toxic behavioral patterns, I had to recognize it. And I said, you know what? I have a habit of being overly critical of myself. How do I change that? Okay, I need to reaffirm myself. I need to reparent myself. When I'm going through this, this is what I need. And this is how I was, I was even able to communicate to my husband, like, hey, this is what I need. 
right? Because I did the work in a previous season. So I didn't snap at him. I didn't give him the cold shoulder because he's trying to give me advice, right? I was able to quickly identify this is where I'm at. I just need a good cry. I just need a hug. I just need a kiss on the forehead. I don't need this right now, right? Yeah. And I was still able to do that graciously. Um, something else I developed in my singleness was... Good job, baby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Something else I developed in my singleness was understanding submission, right? Which, and submission has a bad rep. And I would say that for a big portion of my relationship with God, I would say it wasn't necessarily submission. It was more so religion, right? It was more so um, being a robot, being a slave. And I had to really develop in daughtership in my relationship with God that I submit to the Lord because I love him, right? And because I'm his daughter, not because I have to and because God's going to punish me. It's out of relationship. So I communicate with him. I say, God, this don't make no sense. I, I could never do that before. <laughs> and I just, things will be happening. I would even ask God. I'm just like, well, you know, if God will it, you know, <laughs> and that's how my relationship with God was very robotic. So when I got with him, you know, I was able to like walk with the Lord through everything, go back to him. I'm like, mm, okay, you know, Charles is cool, but what about this? I see what you're saying. Maybe you should talk to him about that. Oh, okay. You know, I was able to talk to him. The Holy Spirit would give me strategy okay, about how to walk with Charles, right, for the things I wasn't sure of, the things I'm like, all right, I mean, I thought, okay, you know, and just having that relationship and having that submission in my walk with the Lord, that's how it translated to a marriage, and I've always said that the way that you, you, how do I say, maneuver with your relationship with God is going to reflect how you operate with your husband, right? So awesome. if you don't know how to submit in your relationship with God, if you don't know how to walk and collaborate with the Lord and to submit to his headship, then you're not going to be able to do that with your husband. I've always been a firm believer in that. So those, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say those are some ways that, you know, I kind of, those are some things that I did in my singleness that prepared me for marriage with you. Good job, baby. You did well. Thanks, boo. <laughs> so did you. Thank you. <laughs> so did you. Nice little landing space, you know? Yep, 100%. Because I don't know. It, you know, the way you talking, how you were five years ago, I don't know. <laughs> Shush. I don't know, baby. Look, I was... Mm, mm. <laughs> I don't know if I could be you know, a stoic fan, you know. Part of actually why I super liked him on Upward mm -hmm. was because, I told you, that last pick that you had when you were in a onesie. Yeah, in my onesie. Yeah, and I said, oh, he doesn't take himself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Because I was kind of concerned at first when like I first started dating Charles. I'm like, is he too serious? You know what I'm saying? But... Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, he was able to like let himself go. He wasn't too stuck. He was still affectionate. He was a human being. Like he had a heart, you know, <laughs> he had a heart. And that, that was something that I'm like, okay, you know, this is going to work. It's going to work. Yep. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Any closing remarks? Um, isn't she beautiful? Nah, aren't you, aren't you a cutie? Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, look. I guess that's it. Go out, be prosperous. Make sure y'all like this video. Mm -hmm. Y'all leave a comment if y'all like this, if y'all like us, any other videos that y'all want us to um well, she's to not record. Like <laughs> 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 and make sure you subscribe to our channel mm -hmm. and share this with a friend if you think it was helpful. Mm -hmm. All right. This is bye. Peace.